Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, hit the like button before you leave. That helps out uh, getting my channel promoted uh, a great deal. So thank you for doing that. Um, today, uh, lately I've been making some themed kind of videos uh, where I have uh, two or three different kinds of something. And today I'm going to do one of those. Uh, I'm going to do uh, bird themed jewelry. So I'm going to have three different kinds of uh, bird themed pieces. So um, before we get to that though, I need to acknowledge and thank some people. Uh, number one, my uh, YouTube channel subscribers. If you're one of these, great. If you're not, you should consider subscribing. Uh, but I really appreciate your support and your comments and your kind uh, words and suggestions. Uh, that really helps out a lot. I also appreciate the donations like the buy me a coffee or the super thanks kinds of things. Those help out uh, financially and help me keep me in supplies and stuff. So uh, thank you for that. Um, I also uh, wanted to thank my patrons over on Patreon. Uh, they are paying for my premium content over there. Uh, I really appreciate their support. Uh, they uh, uh, have formed kind of a nice community over there, and we have a Discord server, and uh, we exchange ideas and and show each other our pieces we're working on and stuff. It's a nice nice community over there. So, if you're interested in that, uh, you know you might consider uh, checking out the video description. Uh, there's also some other links there, like for my merch store and my website, if you need to, you suddenly need to buy some jewelry, which you probably do. So uh, check those out, visit my links, and uh, let's get started on this project today. Okay, let's get started on this. Uh, let me show you what I sketched up here. I'm running out of book here. Okay, so I thought, uh, I've seen various bird jewelry over the years. Uh, my wife has a flamingo like this, sort of, that she bought at, I don't know, Claire's or something like that, some kind of uh, costume jewelry place. And it's not made out of precious metal or anything, but I always like the style of it. It has some legs that swing. Uh, I think the one that she has actually has articulated legs, uh, but I think I'm just going to connect them at one point so they both swing. Uh, and I think I'm going to put a pink uh, CZ on the bale there. Um, first one here, I'm just going to use some 18 gauge sheet. And I'm going <laughs> to, this is where we get to find out whether Chad's sawing skills have improved or not yet. Um, I'm going to try and saw out a wing shape. And then uh, I'm going to texture the wing shape and then solder it back down, offset a little bit so it looks like it's a bird, bird's wing. And then finally, I think I'm going to try and do a, kind of a tropical bird. I'm not sure if he's a a parrot or if he's a cockatoo or something but either way I'm going to use some mixed metals on this one I'm going to do a silver base out of 18 gauge um, I think I'm going to make his beak uh, copper sitting on top of it and then I'll probably overlay some brass for his for his wing so we'll see how that looks I made texture of the brass too if I can if I can I wonder if I can do that brass is pretty hard we'll have to see I could hammer texture it with or something like that so I'm not sure. I guess we'll find out as we go here. But those are my three uh, things I'm going to attempt today. So I think I'm going to start with the cutout earrings. I've already pre-cut some pieces of 18 gauge for a lot of this. Mark them with E for earrings so I can get them mixed up. <laughs> so I need to um, get that shape onto these things. And I think uh, I might actually... Hmm... I could just uh, scribe it out with, you know, color these with a, a sharpie and then scribe it out with a, a sharp object like a pin or something. But I think I might uh, use some masking tape and draw the picture on the masking tape. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not terribly good at sawing, so this will be a good test of my skills. So let me find some masking tape. This is an old spool of masking tape. I don't know if it's still usable. You could also draw it out on a piece of paper, I suppose, and I used to sometimes uh, use rubber cement in order to uh, stick something to a piece of silver. I think actually the tape works pretty well, though. I can just draw on that tape, then. If my drawing skills are up to par today. You know what would make the most sense is if I taped these two together and did them at one shot. Let's do that. Change of plan. 
I was thinking I'd cut them out separately, but why, why do twice the work when I can do it in one shot? Alright, let's see if I can kind of transfer this guy's overall shape. That looks pretty good, I think. I'm no bird expert or anything, but... <laughs> Let's try that. Okay. We'll go see if my sawing skills are up to par today or not. <laughs> Apologies for my messy sawing and dremeling area. Let's see punch go. I'll do a little center punch here. I need to use a little tiny drill bit on this one because I don't want to. I'm going to reuse the uh, I said leaf, uh, the wing itself. So I want to do it at a hopefully a nondescript place where I can kind of blend it in, um, and then we'll use a you know a pretty small bit. So let's see what I have left in these little tiny bits. Okay, I just drilled a hole through the kind of the tip of the leaf there. I had to use, I kept breaking little tiny bits, so I had to use a little bit bigger bit than I wanted to. Let's see how many saw blades I can break. Okay, now I gotta remember that I gotta actually follow the line this time. I usually kind of fledge inward and then clean it up with the file. Since I were using the, the wing itself, I need to actually be good at solving this whole thing. I knew that was going to happen pretty soon. <laughs> That is likely the neatest sawing job I've ever done. <laughs> so, yay. texture opposite sides of these, I think, so that we can face the birds in opposite directions. I don't know if this will work or not. I'm going to try taping them down this time. It'll be a good experiment. masking tape on the back, but it worked. <laughs> so I'm just going to spend a few minutes cleaning these up with the file. As always with Chad's sawing a little bit rough. I'm also, that, that hole I drilled, I'm going to try and make that fade away. This is creative file. I still need to drill a little hole for his eye. 
probably ought to figure out where it's at. That looks pretty good. This guy's going to face this way. And i got to get him cleaned up. See the before and after picture. <laughs> Okay, so we got, actually got this idea from a piece of clip art. Clip art's a great place to look for ideas that you can translate into jewelry. I'm going to drill a little hole where those eyes are. They're pretty close. Alright, it's time to solder these on. I've got a bunch of solder over here from earlier. So... Easiest way probably would be. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do. I should clean up the edges of these too. So, let me. just kind of smoothing out the teeth marks from the saw. I'd like to be as good at sawing as some people. I, one of my patrons uh, showed me a coin that she sawed one time and it was intricate. It was just amazing. I can't ama even imagine being able to do that detail. I couldn't even see well enough to do that, probably. But she's good. Okay. We use this one. This one. I think ideally I'm going to sweat some solder on the back of these wings. And then I'll just place them where I want them, after I flux this, of course, and then we'll solder them on, and then I'll add a little uh, ring so we can have, uh, hook them to some ear wires, and then we'll have some little cute bird earrings. I'm so it's been a good, good practice for me. figure out how I want to place that. A million different possible designs for birds. Stylized birds, realistic birds. You do owls. Owls are fun. I've done a couple of owls in the past. trying to drift on me. <laughs> the good thing about learning how to control the, the heat when you solder is you can re-liquefy solder and push things around if you need to. Once you, uh, you know, have gotten to the point where you can play with things like that, it makes things a lot easier. One of the ways that helps me to do that is fix soldering. So, if you ever want to see how to do that, I have a video all the time I'll put the link right up there. It's worth watching. It's, it's what took my silversmithing from being mediocre to being pretty good. And from being a rank amateur to being a non-rank amateur. <laughs> He's trying to hydroplane on it. 
Sony over here. That looks pretty similar. Oh. Let's see if I have any springs already turned. Like some 18 gauge. I'll use those. Well, normally I use a little bit smaller ones, but I think for these ones I want some substantial ones. Rings, I should say. To hook the wires on it too. I usually use 20 gauge. These are thick 18 gauge for my earrings, so. Oopsie. Spring kind of right where the wing and the head kind of diverge. There and we'll see how it hangs. Let's change it. It'll hang about like that. I think that's all right. <laughs> that, that wing really wants to go somewhere else. <laughs> I'm going to throw those in the pickle now so we can start on the next one. So, flamingo. I think what I'm going to do on this one, I already I pre made a, a bale for it so I didn't have to worry about that I mean, since we're doing three projects. I'm going to use uh, some 10 gauge square maybe for his neck. Got a piece of that should be long enough. And I'm going to flatten it out so. It, solder nicely to the 18 gauge. Um, I'll probably use a little piece of 18 gauge for its head and beak and then we'll drill a hole again. And this will be another piece uh, overlaid on the top and maybe I'll put a texture on that one too. I don't know. So we'll get started on those. I'll have some kind of uh, hook on the back for the legs to hang from. Okay so let's uh, I think let's do the masking tape thing again. That would seem to work pretty well. Alright, so I need to make his body about like, so really I need a, you know, a shape like that, a kind of a teardrop shape almost. That's sort of, that will get me something. This is just a lapidary template that I had for years. So I need the top of this curve maybe. I have a French curve somewhere, I don't know where he's at. That looks pretty much the same. The good thing about this one is I don't really have to uh, saw this one. I can use the, the snips to cut this, up, which will save me some time. I'm also going to need to cut a wing here. I thought about using uh, either copper or brass, but I think I'm just going to do some, some more uh, silver sheet with maybe a little texture on it. So let's cut this guy out. Those old lapidary templates have come in pretty handy. I don't even remember where I got them from. Everybody always asks me about these shears too. These are just uh, Fisker's craft shears. But I'm not a sponsor. Although I would be, these have been very good shears. So Fisker's, if you hear me, I like your shears. They are way more durable than they look. I thought about doming his body, but I think uh, for a three, a three different bird 
things in one video, I probably, that would make it a little bit too long. So we're just going to go with a flat body today. <laughs> but you probably could, though. Give it more of a three-dimensional aspect. little curve in feature here. I may add that after everything's all soldered together. You know. so this is a little bit bigger than I made, but that's all right. Okay, so I need to flatten this guy, but I probably um, should curve him first, I think. This kind of stuff is easier to bend if you have it attached to a big piece, so the other thing about square wire like this is going to try and twist on you. So you have to kind of correct that as you go. Sometimes if you need more leverage, if you use a, a second pair of pliers to hold from the opposite direction, that gives me way more torque. And as my hands get older I don't, and I start losing more and more strength, that helps a lot, having some tricks like that. So really, I'm going to make a head out of some 18 gauge sheet or something. And so I only need it really up to there. So I'm going to go ahead and flatten this here. Oops. I'll use that. This is just a sort of a smooth headed texture hammer. It used to be smooth headed. <laughs> I can do this without uh, hitting my finger too many times. marked so I could solder it like that to it. So let's see how that works. I'll have to trim that off. So I'm going to solder it like that. need to cut this off right about so about right there okay now I need to make a little flamingo head <laughs> I guess I'll use it out I'll make it out of some bit of 18 I have laying around somewhere. Here's a little bit of 18. Okay. Do it this way this time just for giggles. Show you another trick if you don't know this one. It's easier to get a real detailed line. Okay, so I'm going to cut that out now. Kind of shaped his head there a little bit. I also curved the end of his neck just a tiny bit. <clears throat> so that it would kind of match the curve there. So let's solder those together. I think I may add a little silver ball as this guy's eye as well. Be just about right.
say? A little sort of red on this water here. sheet that goes on top here. So I sat for a little while and I thought about it and I think I'm just going to leave it plain because I think this one is going to look kind of clean and neat. So I don't want any texture on that. I guess I'm going to go ahead and uh, solder this down. Add a jump ring on here, but no. I'm fish out that bale I made. <clears throat> so I put a little bezel for a little uh, pink cubic zirconia since it's a flamingo. You know? I thought that would be adorable. So I need a little ring that that will go through that I can put on the top there. I got a little bit of 14 gauge turned into jump rings. That would be appropriate. Okay, now for the legs. Let's put him in the pickle for a while. Go to the pickle with you. Just going to use maybe some 12 gauge square for these guys. I think I'm basically going to make a number four. Like that. <laughs> so, but it probably needs to be a tiny bit bigger than this because I made my body just a tiny bit. going to go straight across there. solder where they cross just to prevent issues later. See if we can get these attached. Get this bottom foot solder on.
guess we better fish out the flamingo and see how he's doing. See how these two would work together. So I'm thinking this is going to be right behind it. And it should be able to free swing on here just for giggles. So, and then we'll put our bail on there too. So, probably I'm going to put uh, a ring that you can close on the back here. And I'll put a ring on here that, you, that is soldered shut, and I'll hook it over that at the end after we polish it, and we'll have our thing together. So, uh, let's figure out how far down. Well, let's file the top of this. Flash. Got these flattened pieces of wire I was using the other day. Well, these might make a good ring for the back. So I'll know once we figure out where this exactly is going to hang. We'll, uh, solder that on. Oh, I think I see the perfect loops. These look like they're 16 gauge. Sweat a little solder onto this ring on the outside of here. And then let's, uh, before we pickle all this stuff, let's solder this onto here. <clears throat> People sometimes ask me how I am able to solder over and over again with hard silver solder. One of the things is just learning how to control the heat and where you're applying the heat. Um, for instance, this is one of the few times where I'm soldering something completely separate that isn't going to be soldered to it, but soldered around part of it. And so I don't have to heat this uh, flamingo at all. I just need to heat the bale. In fact, it would be better if I only heated the bale because the uh, you don't want it to solder to the flamingo. And the flamingo, if you keep it from reaching soldering temperature, you're fine. I'm going to heat those both up and put them in the pickle and then uh, take a little break and we'll get back to the third one. Alright, for the third one, uh, I went ahead and I drew this guy out or pretty close to him on this piece of uh, 18 gauge. So I'm going to cut him out. I did one other thing. I was kind of doing a proof of concept. Uh, I wanted something to look like a branch, you know, with some texture to it, some bark. So I used this little texturing hammer. And I just pounded this wire, you know, from various directions. And it actually did kind of look like a stick now. So I'll use that in the future, probably. Um, I'm going to cut this guy out. Okay, trim that up a little bit. So I'm going to overlay some copper for his beak and some uh, brass for his wing there. And so I need to kind of shape. Let me try a brass beak and see how that looks. Yeah, I think I like that better. some hidden bales back here, but I want to make sure he hangs right, so.
now I just want to put a little hidden bale behind this guy. So I think I'm going to use a little bit of uh, skinny half round. You could sweat a little solder onto the ends of these things, but then sometimes the ends are a little bit rounded. It's hard to get them to balance. him pickle for a while along with the others and then I'll come back and finish them. I just finished polishing these so I wanted to show you the final result. Let's make sure I'm in frame here. We got the uh, earrings that ended up looking like those. They came out cute. We got our flamingo with the movable legs with the sparkle on top pretty good and I was pleased with this one I was gonna do something with tree branches on it this weekend so playing with uh, making that look like a, a branch I think that'll help but I like the, the three metals so I'll get better pictures and put them at the well, end I hope you enjoyed the bird themed jewelry uh, I enjoyed making those and uh, I hope that you'll take a moment and uh, hit the like button down below uh, if you did that helps out a, a whole lot for me uh, also, don't forget to hit the video description for the various links, like the Buy Me a Coffee link, or if you want to think about signing up for my Patreon, uh, get rid of all these ads and stuff. Uh, you could also visit my merch store, uh, where you can get things like my, my idea book, uh, which I have found invaluable lately. Uh, writing down and sketching out my ideas with some graph paper, which is what this has, has dramatically improved my outcomes. So. Uh, you might consider checking that out. Um, but either way, uh, I appreciate you coming to visit. Don't forget to leave a comment. Uh, thanks for coming. Take care. Happy silversmithing.